Hey everybody, it's Mr. Paul Adams here, and welcome to another episode of You Country, the country music show that's all about you, kinda. Today we are heading overseas to the USA, to Michigan to be precise, to speak to a Nashville recording artist, and his name is Waylon Hannell. Hello, Waylon. Hello. How are you doing? You're right. <laughs> Very good. How are you, brother? I'm great. Great for seeing you, man. And thank you for for agreeing to be on the show. This is the first yeah. time we've ever spoken. Yes. Kind of. Um, <laughs> so, uh, the, 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 so yeah, welcome to you, country. It's uh, it's the music show that's all about you, kind of. Um, so, first question again is: How did you get started, and and what was the support like when you decided that you wanted to be a, a country musician? Well, I got my first guitar when I was 15 years old. And I've, uh, I'm a self-taught artist. I've never had a lesson in my life uh, playing or singing. I taught myself right on YouTube. And uh, I played for about, I'm going to say, two or three months. And I finally got all the chords down. I didn't learn the traditional way because I didn't know what I was doing. I was teaching myself. All I wanted to do was play Walk the Line. That's all I wanted to play. <laughs> so I learned how to play that. And of course, when you finally learn a song, you get the bug and you got to learn them all. So I learned uh, quite a quite a few songs, a lot of songs, actually. And uh, mom finally told me, Waylon, you need to try to sing. And I said, no, 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 I don't want to do that. And she, make a long story short, she ended up taking my guitar away from me <laughs> and uh, kind of blackmailed me into singing. And I'm very glad that she did that because I wouldn't be here talking to you and I wouldn't I wouldn't have been able to do pretty much everything that I have done with music. So I owe it all to my mom and dad. There we go. So thanks, mom and dad, for uh, for sorting that out. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here talking to you as well, like you said. Exactly. So thank you very much. So we I will admit we, we've done an interview <laughs> pretty much for live in the living rooms as well so we we have spoken before i'm not i'm not going to pretend that we haven't yeah. but um, <laughs> we, we kind of covered this so we, we we've spoken about you being old country in the in the last show but i want to phrase yeah. the question slightly differently on this one how do you feel about the rivalry between old country and new country or the perceptions that fans have towards each of the each of the different sort of aspects of the genre um, you know, the way that I think about it and maybe, and maybe I'm the only one who thinks this way. Um, if you go back to the seventies, sixties, whatever, I think the best era for country music was the 1970s. In my opinion, uh, that's when you had your Johnny Cash, David Allen Coe, Waylon Jennings, you had all them big time stars just coming out and music in general. You know, for in the 70s, you had CCR, Marshall Tucker Band, Leonard Skinner, the Beatles. You had everybody was on fire at that time. And parents in that generation, you know, the kids going to concerts, 18, 21 years old. The parents thought that that music was too much. You know what I mean? They thought that that was too raunchy. They thought it was too this, too that. And then you move into nowadays. And that music is considered classic and good. Yeah. So um, in my opinion, it will circle back and this music now will seem like classic, but it just, it's not, it's not the same as what it used to be. Uh, nowadays, they don't use a lot of real instruments. Um, they have a bunch of click tracks. It's, uh, it's on the computer mostly and kind of auto-tuned. Um, so it's nice, it's nice to be able to hear people like Cody Johnson, uh, definitely Cody Jinx. He's an independent artist. He's not signed with anybody. Um, okay. it's nice to hear people like that bringing back, uh, steel guitar, dobro, stand up bass. It's, it's what country needs in my opinion. So okay. that's, it, that's pretty much my answer. I've asked you to pick three songs today uh, for, for the Spotify uh, podcast. So what is the first song that you, you're choosing and, and why? Uh, I'm going to talk about um, one of my songs, and it's actually the first song that charted for me on the Music Row chart in uh, Tennessee. 
Um, it's entitled New Old Outlaws. And I wrote this with my uh, really good friend, Bernie Nelson, who lives in Fredericksburg, Texas. And um, uh, it's it's probably one of the top five of my favorite songs that I've either written or co-written with somebody. And if like what we were talking about in the previous question, if you like old school country music with a good story, you need to give that song a listen. It is fantastic. It's upbeat. It's raunchy. It's a great, great song. Okay. Well, here it is. Uh, New Old Outlaws from Waylon Hannell. And we'll be right back. So uh, so there we go. Welcome back. Uh, that was uh, Waylon Hannell with uh, New Old Outlaws. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, so I, I obviously doing my research earlier on. Uh, I was looking at your, your your website. You've got an impressive list of of people you've opened for. <laughs> yeah, I'm very fortunate that I got those shows. And uh, my manager is my mother, and uh, she calls herself Momager. Okay, I'll let you guys. That, that, that's fair yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, over over half those shows, uh, she's actually got me. Wow. And just reaching out and saying, hey, do you need an opener? This right here is my son. And I go, oh, that's your son. Let's sure. Let's bring him up. And it's uh, I've been very, very fortunate and pretty much welcomed uh, by all those people in their their management teams. And I just I'm very grateful for it. So have you, have you managed to hang out with any of them? Uh, yeah. You know, sometimes they get busy and uh, they don't want to come off their bus. Um, which is fine. You know, if, uh, if I had millions of people screaming my name, wanting to <laughs> tear my clothes off, I'd stay in my bus too. <laughs> I don't know. When you've been but, single a long time like me, sometimes that's what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, but yeah, I got, I've got to shake a lot of their hands and talk to them for half an hour. My favorite guy out of all those people that I opened for on that list, my favorite one was Trace Adkins. Really? Trace Adkins is one of the coolest nicest redneck bad to the bone dudes i've ever met he just he's super nice and he doesn't like a lot of riffraff going on he's a very i respect him i I respect him with every bone in my body there we go that's pretty cool don't hear much about people like that when you went up close so that's that's nice to hear so what um we we've we've spoken like you're 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 not southern is what you're saying you're not from the south no uh, and you're you're from Michigan but you work in Nashville so what what's the country music scene like in Michigan and what's it like working in Nashville as opposed to Michigan if that matters. um so Nashville there's so many fish in that pond you know there is every every waitress every waiter every bartender um, they know how to play guitar and write songs and sing. So it's pretty hard to try to make it in a town where music is everything, yeah. you know? So, and don't get me wrong, Nashville is a great place, but you just, you got to really have something different if you want to be standing out. Uh, in Michigan, uh, it's one, it's my home state. So I love being here. We have great deer hunting we have elk deer just great wildlife so that's another reason i don't want to leave and uh all my family's from here and the people up here are they're they're damn near starving for good country music you know there there's been so many people that came out of michigan i mean you got bob seeger ted nugent kid rock madonna um grand funk railroad you have all those people that have come out of this state and um it's just it's pretty cool to kind of think that i can be a part of that people you know or a part of those people yeah definitely i'm gonna add one for you i don't know if you've ever heard of him uh he's from michigan he's rj harper a friend of mine and uh check him out great voice great voice i will um so it Brings us to the second song now, your your second song choice on Spotify. So what is that and why have you chosen it? Uh, I like this one. It's uh, it's one that's not talked about too much, but it's a good favorite of mine. It's called Too Late to Turn Back Now. And uh, I also wrote that with Bernie Nelson uh, in Texas. And that, that song is actually off my first album, uh, self-entitled My Name, Waylon Hannell. And um, 
it's uh this song right now is actually on the chart currently at number 65 and uh it's a great great song it it gives me a waymore's blues waylon jennings vibe it's it's just a bad to the bone tune and uh it, it makes you want to get up and do something it's a cool song so there we go. That was another of Wayland's songs there. Do check out the rest of his collection there. And, uh, and yeah, we wish you luck on that, that charting. So, Wayland, it is now time for our quiz on you, country. It's called What Do They Know? You're kind of sitting. You, you can't see at the moment, but when it does go on YouTube, you'll see that it's nice and, and sparkly. And it kind of matches your ceiling as well, which is quite cool. Um, um, you you'll, you'll see when, when you see it. So we have a quiz here on New Country. Uh, it's never had a name before until today. And it's called What Do They Know? And uh, what we do is we ask our guests, we just two minutes, and we fire a load of questions at you on a chosen subject. So far, we've had... Uh, Back to the Future, Jaws, and Taylor Swift. So far, James from Live in the Living Room is winning on nine points. Just nine Ooh. points. So I have a feeling we might have someone uh, surpass that today in, in Wayland. James is in the background. We can't see him, but he is listening intently to make sure that Wayland doesn't okay. win. So we're literally going to put two minutes on the clock. What was the name of Wayland? What was Wayland Jennings' name when he was born? Sorry, that's the question. Uh, it was Wayland Jennings with a D at the end. That is correct. Who taught Jennings to play guitar? Uh, I believe it was himself. It was actually his mother. Uh, sounds familiar. Oh. It, uh, so, in which song does Jennings sing, Once I mess with your mind, your little heart won't beat the same? Uh, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Is it just to satisfy you, take it to the limit, I'm a rambling man, or come with me? Rambling man. That is correct. At what age did Jennings drop out of school? Was he 12, 16, 18, or 14? Uh, I believe it was 18. That's incorrect. Who did Jennings give up his seat in what would later become the day the music died? Did he give Buddy up? Buddy That's actually incorrect. Uh, oh, Jennings, the big popper. Yeah, it was here. Yeah. Jennings wrote the the, the same, sorry, wrote and sang the theme song for which TV show? The Duke's Hazard. That is correct. What became the first country album to sell one million copies? Was it Wanted the eighteen seventy four? Sorry, second. Was it Wanted the Outlaws? It was indeed. Uh, why was Jennings fired from his job as a DJ at KVOW Radio in Littlefield in Texas? Was it for bad ratings, habitual drunkenness, playing Little Richard, or cursing on the air? Uh, playing Little Richard. That's correct. Who was Waylon's roommate in Nashville? Was it Johnny Cash, George Jones, Mel Haggard, or Glenn Ham Campbell? Ooh, uh, Johnny Cash. That is correct. Which Eagles song did Jennings cover with Willie Nelson? Ooh. Was it uh, Desperado, Take It to the Limit, Witty Woman, or Peaceful Easy Feeling? Uh, take it to the limit. That's correct. Why was Jennings arrested in 1977? Was it for trespass? Ah, the time is up. But we will finish the question. Was it because of trespassing, public intoxication, possession of cocaine, or aggravated assault? Possession of cocaine. <laughs> that is correct. Waylon, you got eight. Oh, man. We still have James as a, how is this even possible? Dude, like, I thought I was going good on that you, too. You were, man. And I obviously, um, I need to get better and quicker and flasher with my questions. Like, no, you're cool. Questions. So, um, so very, very quickly, uh, just for the answers, uh, obviously he was born with the name Wayland, which was correct. Uh, it was his mother who taught him to play guitar, which is, uh, the same as you, uh, so that's quite good, quite nice. Uh, in kind of, uh, in which song does Jennings sing? Once I mess with your mind, it was I'm a rambling man. Uh, at what age did he drop out of school? He was actually sixteen, uh, okay. which was the same as me. Uh, who did Jennings give up his seat to? It was actually the Big Bopper. Uh, Jennings did write and sing uh, the song Dukes of Hazard, which is one of my favourite all time songs. Uh, me too. What, of the first country album to sell one million copies. That was Wanted, The Outlaws. Uh, did you say it was 1974? I thought it was 74. Or is it 76? 
I'm, I'm going to stick with 74 because that's the year I was born, so I'm happy with that. Uh, why was Jennings <laughs> fired from his job? It was for playing Little Richard. Uh, Johnny Cash was his roommate in Nashville. It was Take It to the Limit, uh, was the song he sang with uh, Willie Nelson, which was a cover of the Eagles classic. And he was arrested for possession of cocaine. Sadly, only eight. I thought you were going to do it. I really thought you were going to do it, but James is winning. How- <laughs> Me too. I thought um, I was at 15. <laughs> that's just so, so annoying. Before we go <laughs> on to the next uh, bunch of questions, then we've got one more song uh, from Spotify that you've chosen. So if you want to tell us what it is, why you've chosen it, and then just introduce the song for us. For the third song, uh, it's a, it's kind of cool. It's special in my book. And, uh, it's a big fan favorite in Michigan. Um, it's one of the first songs I ever wrote entirely by myself. I was 17 years old when I wrote it. It's called Wolverine. And uh, uh, what's kind of funny about it, the whole first verse is nothing but a lie. Uh, I just want to let you guys know that because mm-hmm. in the first verse, it's the first line is kind of funny. So, um, but it's a, uh, it's a great song. And the only reason I, uh, entitled it Wolverine is because of two reasons. One, it was the only word that rhymed and I had no other word. And my grandparents have a cabin up in Wolverine, Michigan, where we used to go deer hunting and, uh, bear hunting up there for a lot of, for a lot of years. And, uh, so those are the two reasons why this song is named Wolverine. So there we go. Wolverine on Spotify, Wayne and Hanel. We'll see you in a second. So here we are. That is uh, Waylon Hanel. With, I keep going to say Waylon Jennings. I'm sorry. It's just like it's just habit. <laughs> Waylon Hanel with Wolverine. And uh, right, uh, yeah. Again, I'm gutted that you did not get more than eight on that quiz. I I know me too. James, but I want somebody else to win. Well, here this is the thing. Uh, if you would, I would love to come back on this channel and I try to beat it. <laughs> yes. Well, we're gonna we possibly have a Champions League as well. So. So Ooh, okay. Space. Beat that bracket. So very, very quickly then, um, what's next for for yourself? Um, well, so uh, actually this Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving, um, we have uh, my music video release party coming up. And uh, it's for my new single that's going to be dropping out pretty soon. It's entitled My Kind of Lonely. Uh, that song was written by Bernie Nelson and Frank Myers. And... Uh, I'm very fortunate that I have those two guys that pitched me that song and uh, let me put it on my album and call it my own. And it's just crazy to think that I have a song by those type of writers. You know, Bernie Nelson, very close friend of mine. He wrote uh, for Trace Adkins, Pam Tillis, um, Garth Brooks, uh, Confederate Railroad. And uh, then you have Frank Myers and he wrote for Garth Brooks, Alabama. Um, I believe he wrote for uh, John Michael Montgomery. It's just, and I have one of those songs that they wrote. So it's a good feeling. Wow, that is... And then, so we have that coming up and then I'll be opening for Travis Tritt in June of 2024 for the Bay City Country Music Festival here in Michigan. And uh, this will be the second time I open for Travis. So it'll be cool to shake his hand again. Well, tell him I said hi. He doesn't know where I am. I will, tell I him will. I said hi anyway. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to do the whole uh, great day to be alive. That I've got a song called uh, called Forty Seven, which basically has the same sort of sentiment. And I didn't even know that song existed until after I'd released it. And I was like, Oh my god, it's pretty much the same sort of song. So I, I, I love Great Day to Be Alive. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Last last thing I'm going to ask you very quickly before we run out of time. Uh, what is one question you wish I would have asked? Um, I guess, huh? What's the weather? (laughs) What's the weather? (laughs) It's cold. cold. (laughs) (laughs) Waylon, you've been a fantastic guest. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Yeah, Uh, thanks for having me, man. We're going to put all your all your links in so that everybody can can find you, and we're going to get you back so that you can beat James because it needs to perfect. So. Thank you very much for being on the show. Uh, and everybody at home, give a big round of applause for Waylon Hannell. Thank you very much. <laughs> so there we go. That was Waylon Hannell all the way from the USA. And thank you very much, Waylon, for being on the show. I really enjoyed that interview. 
It's a pity he didn't quite beat James off that top spot, but you can come back and try and beat him. I think we've got a problem. I think we're going to have a problem with James. We're, we're not going to get rid of him on that top spot, but let's see. Next week, coming up, we have the fantastic UK country artist, Rhiannon Page. But until then, we'll see you next Tuesday.